Well, Jane Ace has gone in for social work and better housing conditions for the poor. Mr. Ace is about to put over his biggest real estate deal. There's a connection there because Jane is joining a group of women who are opposing the city's collection of the identical piece of ground Mr. Ace expects to sell the city for a housing project. This episode is in alternate scenes between the meeting place of the women and Mr. Ace's office. But first, the meeting where Mrs. Marsh, society leader and chairman, is calling for order. Listen. I'm calling the meeting to order. Not a word. Mrs. Block, please. So sorry, my dear. Everybody comes with him. Oh, that's better. There's a lot to discuss, and our time is limited. So I'd like to have as little confusion as possible. Now, the secretary will please read the minutes. <laughs> the meeting was called to order by Mrs. Marsh, and the group went immediately into the place for better housing conditions for the poor. It was moved and seconded that we do everything within our power and leave no stone unturned to oppose the building of homes for the unfortunate on the proper to the far side of the railroad track. A committee of three was appointed to look over other properties to the, and recommend them to the city. In this way, our work will be constructed. As we can point out to the city, the advantages of a better location for this housing project. It is just moved and seconded that we adjourn for a week to give the committee time to make a full report on all locations. The meeting is then adjourned. Signed, Adele Rosalyn Joseph. Order, please. Now, are there any questions to the minute? Anybody have any corrections at all? Well, are there any questions before we proceed with the business at hand? Any questions? Anybody? Yes. Is that a one-piece dress the secretary's wearing or a separate blouse and skirt? <laughs> 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 you're all wondering who it was who asked that question. Ladies, I've taken the liberty of bringing a new worker to our group. I know she'll be received with open arms and the potentiality for which we are known. She's expressed a great interest in our work and will be of great service to us in our cause. Ladies, I want you to meet Jane A. Stand up, please, my dear. May I present Mrs. A. Uh, pleased to meet your acquaintance. <laughs> Won't you all come forward, Mrs. Ace? I beg your pardon? Won't you come up here so our members may have a better look at it? Oh, well, I, I'm such a mess, though. I didn't have oh, that. Oh, quite all right. You look perfectly charming. That's it, now. Right up these two chairs. Oh, oh yes. Oh, oh, me. oh, I'm so sorry. Did you hurt yourself? No, I'm all right. I just didn't see you. Lady, this is Jane A. And over here, my dear. And my hat I met Mrs. Ace in the past week. I told her of the work we're doing. I described the squalor in which our poor are living. The old tenement houses, the wretched rooms, the filthy halls. And she was most sympathetic and understanding. And expressed the hope that she might be able to do something. So I asked her to join us. She need workers of her spirit. And I'm sure she'll fit into our scheme of things. Perhaps I can persuade Mrs. A to express her ideas now. Mrs. A. What? Won't you say a little something to the girls? Oh, well, I'm sure glad to be here and to meet everybody. Uh, Mrs. Marsh told me about how they're working to help the poor people. I think it's a shame that they have to live in this old testament house. Oh, the people, maybe. Well, it's like you said, Mrs. Marsh, pardon me. The squalor. If a squalor came along and blew down those old houses. <laughs> Well, it could. That's why I think it's terrible that they have to live in places like that. I think they ought to have some place where it's, it's nice and comfortable and cool in the summer and vice versa. And I'm going to do anything I can to help them. Because I always say a wife should take the bitter with the better. But why do they have to have the bitter all the time? Especially when there's so much nicer places they can live in. Why do they have to live on the other side of the railroad track? I think it's a shame to of all my holdings, Miss Welch. Yes, Miss Ace. Is, uh, is this everything, this list here? Oh, yes, sir. I checked and rechecked. Everything is here. But, uh, well... But what, Miss Welch? What are you looking so worried about? Well, it's just that... I hate to say this, Mr. Ace, 
But isn't this rather a risky gamble you're taking? A uh, gamble? Well, since oh, when? I know it's none of my business. But after all, I've worked here for you a good many years, and I think I've learned a little from you about being cautious and thinking twice before... I have thought twice. Don't worry, Miss Wilson. I'm not going into this proposition with my eyes closed. Yes, sir. I've got information that I can't divulge at this time. Yes, I thought you had, but it's taking everything you've got. I know it is. It's the biggest deal I've ever been in on, and I'm in on the inside track. You're sure the city's going to buy that? Absolutely. You don't think I'd be putting up everything I've got for an option on it if I weren't, sir? Yes, sir, but I thought I read somewhere or heard that there was a lot of talk about the city building someplace else. Oh, that's just talk. I happen to know that. Oh, Mr. Marsh, come in. Good afternoon. Uh, come in, Mr. Marsh, and... Uh, oh, uh, that'll be all, Miss Wilson. Just go over this once more and make sure it's all there. I want to be able to close this deal by tomorrow. Uh, yes, sir. How are you today, Mr. Ray? Oh, uh, fine. Have a chair. Thank you. I was just going over this list of all my holdings. I'm liquidating everything for the ready cash I'll need to get this option. Oh, fine. You ought to close this. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tomorrow. Well, that's the idea. Uh, Mr. Marsh, my secretary was just... Telling me, <laughs> she's such an overly cautious cat. She thinks I'm taking quite a chance here. And... Nonsense. What chance? I think the city is going to build on that ground. I'm a board of city alderman. I oh, sure, have. I No, I was just saying what she said. She's a pretty smart girl. Keeps in touch with all real estate developments in town. Well, even she knows about this agitation that the women are stirring up against the city's buying this ground. Oh, everybody knows it. The women have been pretty active, but they haven't a chance. I know. My wife's even working against it. Yeah, that, that was quite a shock to me when... I found out that Mrs. Ace was joining up. Oh, but just Mrs. Marsh's way of having Mrs. get acquainted with our set. These women always have to be doing something. It gives them something to think about besides parties and drinks. Yes, I, I guess it does. And let them agitate. Mm -hmm. There's always agitation. Every time the city makes an important move, once the thing's closed, they'll forget all about it and find something else to agitate about. You know women. Yes, I guess they're always... Oh, seriously, you don't believe that anything your wife or my wife could do would interest the city on a deal like this? <laughs> oh, sure, well, I guess there's, so. there's been little or no mention in the newspapers about it. Yes, I, I've noticed that. You can't very well arouse public sentiment when the public isn't being informed. Yes, I noticed the papers have had very little about it. Why should the papers carry anything about it? They know it's not important agitation. They're not interested in what a little group of women might try to stir up. I, I guess it's just nothing. Of course it's, it's nothing. Now, don't you worry about it. You just hurry up. to be able to do something to help the poor people move into better homes. And I'll do anything you want me to, and I don't care how long it takes, because I always say that home wasn't built in a day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mrs. Edwards. I'm sure your talk was inspiring to us all, wasn't it, lady? <laughs> thank you. I didn't know I could make a speech. First well, thank you for coming up, and... Now, while you're still here, I'd like to ask one of our members to make a motion that we appoint you to the Committee on the Newspaper Publishing. Me? Will someone make the motion? Mrs. Chairman. Mrs. Blount. Well, thank you. I, I think Mrs. Hayes is too new a member in our group to hold such a responsible job. Mrs. Chairman. Mrs. Hayes. Well, thank you. Just a moment. I'm not through. Miss Haynes has the floor, Mrs. Blount. I know what Mrs. Haynes is going to say, and I don't well, know. Of course she... you know what I'm going to say, my dear. You know that I know that you thought you were the one for the job. Well, well thank I... you. Ladies, hold up, please. The idea. And in front of our new member. Well, it's nice of I you I insist on order. Mrs. Haynes has the floor. Thank you. I move that Mrs. Ace be appointed a committee of one to handle the newspaper publicity for our campaign. To change the location of the better houses for them of this city. I second the motion. And it's been moved and seconded that Mrs. Ace be appointed the committee of one to handle the newspaper publicity. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. The ayes have it. Congratulations, Mrs. Ace. Uh, what? You're in charge of newspaper publicity. Oh, all right. And if you wait a few minutes after we adjourn, I'll show you just exactly how to go about getting little items in the newspapers about our work. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Block. I think the time has come when we need more than just little items in the newspaper. Well, my dear, but little items are better than none. We're doing all we can. Just what, for instance? Well, we started the ball rolling. Thing like this takes time. Our time is very limited. We need action. Mrs. Chairman. Mrs. Haynes. I'm a member of the committee in charge of seeing the mayor. And I wish to report that so far we haven't been able to gain an audience. There, you see. Order, please, Mrs. Locke. Mrs. Haynes. Why haven't you been able to see her? Well, he just won't see us. 
He knows what we want to see him about. But there's pressure being brought against our campaign. Then we should bring pressure too. And the way to do it is through the newspapers. Let the public understand what's going on. Of course, Mr. Black. And that will be the duty of Mr. A. But what does he know about newspapers? Uh, just a minute now. What do you mean, what do I know about newspapers? That's what I say. What do you know about the newspapers? Well, we take them. <laughs> 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 order, please. Order. I must have order. <laughs> Mrs. Hayes, I think Mrs. Block is unfair. She's condemning Mrs. Hayes without a trial. I think the least we can do after hearing Mrs. Ace's enthusiastic speech is to give her a fair trial on the publicity job. If the newspapers continue to ignore our campaign after that, then will be the time to put somebody else on the committee. But the time is so short. Well, two or three days more won't matter. I think your suggestion is very wise, Miss Payne. We should give Mrs. Ace a fair chance at handling the newspaper publicity. Mrs. Chairman, Mrs. Joseph, after all this rather embarrassing conversation, I move the chair give Mrs. A a vote of confidence on her new assignment. I second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that we give Mrs. A a vote of confidence. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Mrs. A, yes. On behalf of our group, I wish to give you a vote of confidence on your acceptance of the assignment of newspaper publicity. And may you have many little items to show for your trouble. Oh, Mrs. Marsh, please. For not in front of everybody. <laughs> well, at any rate, James in charge of newspaper publicity. And Mr. Race is preparing to stake his all on this deal. Both James and Mr. Race swing into action when next we meet the Easy Aces. 